<laughs> so good. Welcome back, everybody, to another video with my face reading series. And today we're going to be looking at Willem Dafoe. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Gray Estrada. I'm a Chinese medicine lifestylist. And so what that means is I facilitate the lifestyle aspects of Chinese medicine. So face reading being one of them. Face reading is a classical branch of Chinese medicine where we look at the facial features to assess personality structure, aptitude strengths, latent abilities, constitutional strength, the status of the organs. So this is a classical branch and my attempt with the face reading series is to make face reading a little bit more mainstream because a lot of people think of it as sort of a new age bullshit topic. But when we look at Western science, we know that if people get jaundice, they turn yellow or if they lack sleep, they get dark under the eyes. And we know that form and function matter, right? So if we see color changes, we know organs are out of balance. And then we see the reflection of this in the natural world. So a tiger and a monkey are built differently and their size structure points to aptitudes they have. And so Chinese medicine being a naturalistic philosophy says that this is the same for human beings. And one of the places we can see this the most, one of the microsystems is the face, the topography of the face. The face is seen as a landform. So when we look at Willem Dafoe, he's a pretty interesting character. And the reason I picked him, well, one, people suggested him. I got a, I got a number of private messages as well as comments on social media to do Willem Dafoe. And he had been on my radar actually for a while because I think he's got a really interesting face. And uh, the other reason is because he is very dominant in one specific element. And we're going to get to that as we go through the video. But, but he's a good face to read. So let's go ahead and jump in and start talking about Willem Dafoe and see what, um, what his face is according to the face reading lineage and the theory behind this uh, branch of Chinese medicine. So, as usual, the thing I like to start with is Jing, Qi, and Shen when reading a face of someone. So the Jing, Qi, and Shen, these are called the three treasures. Jing is the constitutional essence. This is our bone structure, constitutional strength, genetic strength. And it also has to do with how well we procreate. So the sex organs and sexual vitality, sexual fluids all relate to Jing. And then we also have Qi, which is, a, as I always say, sort of a sensationalized words in the concept of martial arts because... People do telekinetic tricks on YouTube, all of which aren't real, but she really points down to bioelectricity. That's really what it means. So the state of our organs, the state of our breathing, the kind of food we eat, the lifestyle that we are living on a day-to-day -day basis will show up in the face. So when we're talking about chi, we're talking about the bioelectric current in the body. The body produces electrical impulses in the central nervous system and our body is mostly water. So this interface between electricity and water, what they call fire and water in Chinese medicine, imbalances of that overuse of the nervous system over stressing will age okay or burn up the skin and make someone look dry so when we talk about chi that's what i'll be referring to and then shen is the spirit the personality or anima that can be felt out of a person's face but that you can't technically measure or quantify so when we talk about jing chi and shen we look at willem dafoe the first one is jing okay his constitutional genetic strength is actually pretty strong so we can see this in head hair is one so the integrity strength thickness luster of the head hair, especially as a person gets older, is a sign of good jing, specifically good kidneys. Now, if a person has, you know, if they're bald by the time they're 20, this doesn't mean that they're going to die early or that their constitutional strength is weak, but it means the body is allocating resources to other areas to shore up the inherent deficiency, which means the body is saying, well, you're going to lose head hair because we got to take care of other organ systems or other other things in the body. So that's the basic idea. So don't think of that if you're bald early <laughs> that you're going to die young. That's not what it means. But he's got very strong jing. So that thick head of hair is indicative of that. Now the next one is when you look at his face, one of the most predominant things you see is his bone structure. So he's got a really prominent, unique bone structure. He's got some very big, prominent features with some very pointy features. But his bone structure, okay, when someone has um, that really prominent really indented and those those deep cuts in the face this is that sign of a good skeletal structure so Willem Dafoe has it it's a very unique look for sure another person who has this was Arnold Schwarzenegger in his heyday and even now Arnold has a hell of a bone structure and there are some similarities in terms of uh, this very prominent bone structure that I see between him and Willem Dafoe so he with that bone structure, okay, what we're going to see with this is someone that is going to have a lot of energy, typically, as long as they don't get sick or they haven't burned themselves out or come down with a life-threatening life, uh, life disease that's debilitating, they're going to have a lot of energy. So, so my guess is, by looking at Willem Dafoe, 
he is a go-getter type that probably has an abundance of energy given his constitutional strength. Now, at the same time, one of the things that I look at when I'm looking at his Jing, okay, we want to look at these areas in the face that are sort of like cautions. There are wrinkles that form sometimes on people's faces. And we've got to be mindful as to where these wrinkles show up because some are what you would call auspicious and lucky and some not so much. So in terms of where his body is struggling a little bit, okay, where he is, his body is sort of, his Jing hasn't been necessarily hit, but his body is struggling in one area. And that's where we see this line right between his, the lines, between the eyes right here. This really, it's almost in every picture with the exception of the one where he's uh, in a Spider-Man movie. There's, I have four pictures up here and you'll see the one from the Spider-Man clip picture that I have here. It's where he's making a very evil face and you can't see the wrinkle there. But in the rest of his pictures, he's got this, this wrinkle right across between the eyes. And so this area, what it points to, what the theory states in uh, face reading, is that when a person has this, that line across right there, that means their relationship to diet and food needs work. Now, this doesn't mean that he has an eating disorder or something like that. What it could mean is that, he, that his diet may not be as optimal as it could be for his physiology, or he's not enjoying his food, or he's not digesting it well. So I talk about this when I see this in my clients too. People will adhere to a diet because of the dogma. They'll adhere to paleo because it makes sense on paper or veganism or macrobiotics or Atkins or keto or carnivore. It doesn't really matter. People will get dogmatic about something because it makes sense to them on paper. But in the, in the end, we have to test out foods. We have to go through and really put that into effect and see how our bodies respond. So I would say whatever Willem Dafoe is eating, whatever he's doing with food needs a little work. And that's not a slam on him or a judgment, anything like that. But what that means is that something's off. He's either not liking his food, so he's got a diet that he's dogmatic about that he doesn't necessarily enjoy, like I said, or he's not digesting it well. Something's off there. So that would be um, the only like leak that I see really on his face is right there. Now, when we look at his his chi overall, okay, the energy, what we would look at the state of the organs. The coloring in his face is pretty good. He, what he does have, um, and in some of these pictures that I've seen of him, it looks like he might, might have a tendency towards blood deficiency. And when, we, when blood deficiency shows up, we see this really sallow complexion, sort of a pale complexion happen. This can happen to any of us if we get scared, if we get overworked. If we are fasting or if we've been in ketosis for a long time, the body can get a little more pale. There's lots of things that can happen, but if it's chronic and it's staying all the time and it's not intermittent, this is where we're seeing blood deficiency, which is usually overthinking in the mind, too active of a lifestyle, or too much emotional upheaval. So he has a tendency to this, and it could be also related to diet. Sometimes we get blood deficiency as a result of the foods we're eating. So sometimes people if they've been eating a vegan diet for a very long time, blood deficiency is very common. This is also why a lot of women on vegan diets lose their periods. They, with no saturated fat and cholesterol, which is the precursor for all of our hormones, the, the complexion gets pale, they lose their menses. So again, this is all sort of like deficiency syndromes that can come from food. So Willem Dafoe looks like where he could leak a little bit maybe is in this blood deficiency area, as well as dietary stuff, which is again that line across the middle. Now, his Shen, all right, this is, this is cool. I like Willem Dafoe's Shen quite a bit. The Shen is the anima, the spirit, right? The, the energy we can feel, the light behind the face that comes out. Willem Dafoe is very bright. And he, he definitely has this sort of a, there's a tone of mischief, playfulness, but depth at the same time to his face, to his Shen. There, he's got a penetrating gaze and it's very, very cool to see. And one of the things that, that, we can see with him is, okay, the, the sparkling peach luck. I've mentioned this, the, the rock. There are different types of luck that a face can emit. When I did the video on the rock, I talked about how he had sparkling peach luck and something called direct peach, peach luck, and there are five kinds. And I would say that Willem Dafoe definitely has sparkling peach luck, which is aligned with the fire element. So lots of wrinkles, lots of things crun crunching up and crinkling as he smiles. And he's got a very bright countenance to his face. So there's not much that's dull about his face. It's bright, articulated wrinkled and fiery. Definitely fire when you look at his face. So when people have sparkling peach luck, this one type of luck, when they have that, they're very well suited for acting, performing, and these kinds of things. 
And so one of the things that we see is when a person has sparkling peach luck and they happen to be in the movie industry, this is actually auspicious because it means their face, their face points to them having sparkling peach luck and this aligns with the performing spectrum. So in the case of Willem Dafoe, what we're seeing is he has a lot of sparkling peach luck and he is in a profession that, that um, uses that, you know, that, that, that where that's needed. So most definitely this is a, a line, you know, he's got a good face for performing and for the arts. So I would say, you know, in terms of him living out his Tao, his life path, his life current, his, um, his Ming, you know, the destiny of a person, he's on track in that way. So he's got a lot of fire. Now, if we look at his, the prominent features, when I look at him, he's got quite a few, actually. That's what makes his face very strong. So one is his, the prominence of his wrinkles. So a lot of people in the West, they really don't like wrinkles. We all, I have friends of mine who we, I was just talking to the other day who are like, I'm getting wrinkles and they're sort of depressed and upset about it. And Chinese face reading really, in a sense, celebrates wrinkles. Now, some mean that your lifestyle needs work and other times these wrinkles are very auspicious. It means you're living a good life. So not all wrinkles are created equal. And we need to keep that in mind. There are wrinkles that we do want to get that are, that are auspicious, that are lucky, that mean you're living in an emotionally balanced and harmonious way. And so we look at Willem Dafoe, he's definitely got so he's got good smile lines. So he's got the joy lines that show up on the what, what the West calls crow's feet, but my teacher doesn't like that title. But the joy lines. So he's got good joy lines. When he smiles, he smiles with his eyes. So his eyes have a lot of movement when he smiles, which means that when, when people smile with their eyes, the ability to trust them and to feel into their emotionality is usually stronger when they have those good smile lines. So he's got a lot of that um, in terms of his wrinkles, just great wrinkles all across the board. The only place that I see some wrinkles that, you know, that I would, I would be mindful of. He has the wrinkle or an indentation that's sort of starting right here. And this usually means that the physicality of the person, okay, their, their physicality is being pushed too much. So maybe working too, the hours are too long at work. Maybe there's a little too much cardio or too much activity. So usually that means the physical rhythm of life needs to slow down a little bit. He has that dent ever so slightly and it looks like it's building, but I wouldn't worry about that as much as, as the lines that I see forming through his cheek. So when we, the, the cheek, this area right here, okay, the whole, the fullness of the cheeks, the fleshiest part of the cheeks relates to our immune system. This, re, this relates to the lungs. And so when people start to get these really deep grooved lines through the cheek, what this can mean is that the immune system can be under duress. Now this can be an autoimmune problem sometimes. Sometimes it can mean that their immunity is low, and it for many years has been low. The wrinkles, the deeper the wrinkles and more prominent, the more prolonged the condition has been, the deficiency in the body. So when I see lines running through a person's cheek, I'm not always stoked on that. I would want to probe a little deeper, and there are always exceptions to the rule, so there is no steadfast 100% answer. But I'm not always excited about those because it usually means the immune system, okay, the immune response in the body is maybe not as optimal as it could be. So this doesn't mean that he's sick or dying, but this means that he might deplete quickly. This might mean that if he does too much, he feels it very fast. And his, his reserves of yin, okay, the, the kerosene in the lantern, right, the fluid, the thing that allows us, the fuel that allows us to keep going, that, that yin that he had maybe in his youth, um, as he's gotten older, it looks like his energy might be taxed a lot quicker. So I would tell him to be mindful um, of his energy in that regard. Now, going back to the, the, um, the prominent features on his face, okay, he's also got a space between his teeth. So when we see a gap between the teeth, Arnold Schwarzenegger has this as well when there's that gap. He may have gotten it fixed, but in his youth, I know he had it. And Willem Dafoe may have gotten it fixed too, but his natural um, smile has a gap right there, which is a sign of jing. So I noticed that right away. I thought that big gap, that's that constitutional strength that we see. But he's also got what they call a bottom-heavy face. So when we look at a, a person's face, we can break it down from top to bottom in three sectors, okay? So from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin, this is our emotional and instinctual area. So the spacing, okay, from the bottom of the nose, this distance right here, okay, so this whole sector, this whole line is the emotional and instinctual. From the nose, from the tip of the nose or from the bottom of the nose to the top of the eyebrows, this is the pragmatism of the person. This is the pragmatic spectrum of a person's existence, the size, okay? And then from the eyebrows up to the top of the head, this is the thinking or mental aspect of a person. 
So in Willem Dafoe, what we see is he's got a really long, from the nose to the bottom of the chin, you can see that it's very long compared to the bottom of his nose to the top of his eyebrows. So he's got a long lower portion. He's bottom heavy. And what this means is that Willem Dafoe, okay, according to face reading theory, is that he's going to be much more inclined to lean toward the emotional and instinctual in his, whatever you want to call it, his, 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 um, his route that he takes in life. Okay, the way he navigates his life terrain is going to be heavily on the emotional and instinctual. We also see this a lot, quite a bit in actors. Now, his face, the pragmatism part, okay, from the nose to the, from here, this shows that out of the three sectors, okay, the mental thinking mind, pragmatism and emotional and instinctual, the pragmatism is probably the smallest. That doesn't mean he's not pragmatic. What that means is that being practical is probably not at the top of his list. He's probably more inclined to go with, to rely on an emotions and instinctual and, in, and intuition, that kind of thing, instinct and intuition. And then pragmatism, so-so, right? Not a ton, but he's got a pretty tall forehead, which again, the forehead relates to the mind, okay? The, the, they call this the palace of inheritance. So the wide open forehead, he's got a good thinking mind. So when I look at him, I can see that he's got a, he's got a nice broad forehead, which means he's open-minded. And so in terms of what's the biggest, right? The biggest is down here. Second biggest is the forehead up here. And the smallest is here. So in order of how he operates in life, I would guess is emotional and instinctual, mental second, and then pragmatism being pragmatic would be third. So it's interesting. I'm looking at him. Now, when we go through his face, okay, I always like to do the interpersonal nature, okay, which is where Chinese medicine and face reading, what they do is, is they... Through thousands of years of observation and the yin yang theory that's very prominent in Chinese medicine, which is all about polarities, night and day, birth and death, male and female, alpha and omega, you know, fire and water. All there's all these polarities in life. And so Chinese medicine has very real associations with organ function, yin yang, polarities, with the right and left sides of the body. So when we look at this interpersonal photo, okay, what we do is Chinese medicine and face reading says that the right side relates to the public persona. The right side of a person's face, okay, this side, is what we show to the world. It's what we show on a first date, first job interview. The left side is our interpersonal nature. And so one of the things I tell people if they're looking to explore face reading in some capacity is to look at people's faces, friends of yours, family members, but I think it's better with strangers because then you actually get a read on what you actually feel because you don't know them. Tune into a person's right side of their face and their left side, and you can get a mark for, for um, the different feelings you get from focusing on the left and right. So again, the left side is the interpersonal nature, and the right side is the public persona. So when we're looking at this picture, the picture on the left is his public persona. It's his right side mirrored, two rights put together. And what we notice about his face and the public persona is that it's considerably wider. Like he has some very real asymmetries in his face. And his public persona is broad, okay? It's, it's technically more young, more masculine, more of an alpha male, sort of a, a dominant presence. Like that's the feeling you get with a face that wide. So what this means is that Willem Dafoe's public persona is probably dominant. He makes a very big impact when he comes into a room. People see him as very larger than life. He's an actor, of course, he's in Hollywood. That's gonna come with the territory. But then when we look at his interpersonal nature, considerably narrower. Right, so this pretty strong asymmetry in his face is considerably more narrow on the left. And again, this was hard to find a picture of him without a facial expression head on. And this is, you know, with celebrities, to find a straightforward picture with no expression isn't always easy. So he has an expression, and because of that, the, the expressions on the face are different. But the face on the right, which is his interpersonal nature, is considerably more yin. It's narrower, more subdued. And Neither one of these faces make me uncomfortable. And that's kind of one of the tells that you want to look at is when you look at a person's face, both of these faces, I always say, it's sort of like if you were to go sit down and have a beer with either one of these faces, you know, what would be your initial reaction upon sitting down? And, and, and how do you think the conversations would go? For me, intuitively, neither one shows dominant or aggressive tendencies. They, it seems relatively friendly on, friendly on both sides, but his interpersonal nature seems more subdued. And, you know, whenever I do these, these readings, I'm always looking at their backstory a little bit because I'm not here to, to psychically predict. I'm not here to put face reading on, on this pedestal and say that it's infallible because it's not. Mistakes happen. There are exceptions to rules. 
But I read about the celebrities and then I read about their life and I try to find the correlations between the standing theory in the book and in the books with their life. I'm actually hunting from both directions. So for me, this is an exploration too. And it's really interesting when you look at his interpersonal life, Willem Dafoe is a lot more introverted than you would think. And his interpersonal nature, it shows, is narrower, closer set eyes, which means more detail-oriented, a little bit more closed off, not as broad and as open. But his public persona is very wide, which means he's actually well-suited for the, for the for movies. His right, his right side, the interpersonal, um, I'm sorry, the public persona side, the picture on the left, is very broad and dominant, which means his public persona is big and broad and dominant. Interpersonal, considerably smaller. So in reading about him, you know, he's into meditation. Um, he doesn't love people knowing a lot about him. He's a little more introverted. And we can also see this in the set of his eyes, how the depth of his eyes. So when people have very frontal eyes, like my eyes, the eyes push out. There's a lot of whites. They're naturally big. So, and they're more frontal dominant. And when that happens, that means usually the emotionality is more open. The people are more extroverted. And if you look at Willem Dafoe's eyes, they're deeper set. They're pushed back some. So deeper set eyes, we're going to see this, this um, personality structure that's a little more introverted, a little more reserved. And the more dominant that is, the more usually, the closer they keep their cards to their chest. So that's the, that's the thing that I'm seeing with his eyes. And going back to the emotional and instinctual piece, if you look at Willem Dafoe, he's got a prominent chin. And from the profile, his jaw actually juts forward a little bit. He doesn't have an underbite. But that goes back to that emotional instinctual piece from profile. So if a person's face juts forward in the bottom sector, that's another sign. Or if the middle section is really dominant this way, that means pragmatism. And the forehead, same thing. If it's dominant or receding, all these things point to those three layers. So when we look at the, the five elements, I'm going to stick with the primary strong elements that I see in him, and the big one is fire. We see wrinkles. Wrinkles are indicative of fire. So people that get a lot of wrinkles are very fiery. People that don't have any wrinkles usually lack quite a bit of fire. And you know, people that don't have a lot of wrinkles, while we might revere that in the West, it's not auspicious in Chinese medicine at all. It's, it's actually seen as suppression, repression, and not enough emotionality. So lack of wrinkles is actually seen as, for lack of a better term, boring. <laughs> emotionally, um, they can actually be emotionally draining because they're not circulating. If we don't use our emotions and we don't circulate them, that actually sort of points to stagnation. So we should get wrinkles. We want some wrinkles, ideally smile lines, but our face should furrow. We should get wrinkles. So in any case, he's got a lot of wrinkles, predominant, tons of fire. And when we look at his face, there's a scrunching quality. When he smiles and when he moves, there's so many wrinkles that form in different places. And his face really scrunches up towards the eyes. So he's got this sort of contracted energy that shows up right through here. And the eyes and, and, the, and the shen come out, okay? The shen, which relates to the spirit and the fire, comes out of the eyes. So he's got this really wrinkly section through here that really crinkles up, but he's got great wrinkles. So fire is the predominant one. He's also got some, and he's got pointy features, pointy nose, okay, kind of a pointy cheekbones, all those points, okay, all the points, like at the tips of a flame, all those points point to fire. So he's got a really like classic fire face in a lot of ways. Um, he does have a really strong chin, which is a water element feature. So he's got like, that goes back to being kidneys. He's got pretty sizable ears, which is again, you know, that's um, that's that's all kidney related in a in a water feature. He's also got a, a broad, you know, forehead. So he's got some good water in there. But I'd say water and fire are kind of his big ones. Um, you know, he's got pretty decent. You know, his eyebrows are moderate. I would say, you know, they're not real strong. He's got a pretty good jawline. So there's some wood there. Not a lot of earth. He's um, he's not real supple and real plump. So not a ton of earth element. And then metal. Um, he doesn't have a lot of spaces between his face. It, Every time you go through his face, anytime you start to see a smooth spot, you meet a wrinkle or you meet a bump in the bones. And that wide open space is related to the metal element. So he doesn't have a, a ton of that, you know. So I would say fire and water are the big ones that I see that come out of him. And in terms of mountains and rivers, we look at the areas on the face. Uh, this is a topography in Chinese medicine. So the eyes are water features because they're, they're, um, they have moisture. The nose, the nostrils have moisture, the mouth, and the ears. So these are all water features. Um, and, and when we look at it through this lens of the mountains and rivers, this is indicative to where a person is most ideally uh, suited for living in terms of geography. With a fiery face like this and all of these wrinkles, Willem Dafoe would do very well in desert climates. He would do very well in a place like Sedona, Arizona, given if he liked the culture. But living in, you know, the... Um, 
you know, like New Mexico, um, you know, Arizona, you know, finding places that have some beauty in those beautiful red rocks that are crackly and dry, that's very aligned with his face. So he would do well in that kind of area. And if for whatever reason, right, he was an exception to the rule and he did not like that, maybe that was just too much of what he already is, then the sort of opposite would be true, that he would need lots of water to counteract all of that fire or to actually like simmer it down. And you don't, you don't technically want to destruct an element, you know, so I'm not saying he should live in a completely watery, cold place because that might be too suppressive, but maybe a tropical warm place that has a lot of water, right, where there's fire and water present. So that would be my, my, my guidance for him in terms of where to live. And in terms of lifestyle guidance, which is what I do for a living, I read faces and then custom tailor um, a program, lifestyle guidance, based off of what your features look like. And I use the principles of Chinese medicine, feng shui, um, movement arts, seasonal eating, meditative technique. And we use all these pieces to really facilitate and nourish that which you are. So for Willem Dafoe, you know, I would go back to the things that I had said kind of in the beginning. I would say, you know, your diet needs some work. That line across between the lines, I would definitely say like, yeah, you need some dietary work there. I would tell him probably to slow down because this line is forming. It's not pathological, but it's there. And I would really encourage him to nourish yin. So when people wrinkle, um, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but what this means is, is that the, the fluids in the body, the yin, the kerosene in the lantern is being consumed. A lot of this is genetics, you know, the type of skin he has, his, you know, his heritage. There's lots of different factors, but these are things we have to take into account. The features mean something, regardless of genetic heritage. Like this is a tendency or a proclivity that your body is going to lean towards. So for Willem Dafoe, I would say slow down a little bit, less active. With a fiery mind like this and all these fiery features, all right, he, he would need guidance in one of two ways. So in the five element cycle, fire, okay, all the elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood, they have a creation cycle and a destruction cycle. Some elements promote other elements and then some other elements take away or destroy another element. But they have what they call the, the mother-son or the mother-child or mother-daughter relationship. And what that means is there's the element and the one before the element, okay? The element that promotes it is the mother, and the element that comes after it is the child, okay? What it gives birth to. So wood promotes fire in the five-element cycle. So these are there's two ways to kind of where I would tell Willem Dafoe that he could nourish himself wood element activities, which means because he's so fiery, he either needs to nourish the mother, wood, and what that means is physical activity, robust exercise, okay, very high real activity, maybe running, he looks pretty lean, but something where he gets to move his cardiovascular system and he's using his body physically, really critical for someone with this much fire because wood promotes fire, it would promote that which he naturally is. Now, if that cycle didn't fit for him, he's like, no, too much exercise right now, it actually doesn't make sense because I'm too busy, then we would go to the next element, okay, the child of fire, which is earth. Fire promotes earth. And the way we can think about this in the natural world cycle is when there's a forest fire, right, it opens the pine cones, all of the ash creates topsoil, it generates and promotes earth and nutrients in the soil. So what we're looking at with Willem Dafoe is, with all this fire, one of the ways that he could nourish himself too is to drain that fire into earth activities, which is interestingly, interestingly enough, rest, relaxation, doing less, lounging, eating quality food, eating rich food, hanging with friends, socializing, being chill, sitting by a babbling brook while you're camping, drinking a beer, talking with your friends, and listening to someone play guitar. These are all earth activities, so chilling out. So it kind of goes back to that original piece where I would say Willem Dafoe, you know, slow down go be relaxed, but one of the two things. And, you know, in his case, this is always where I leave it to the person too. I have to, you know, this isn't about, again, being psychic. I say, okay, so, you know, Willem, you know, does exercise sound good to you? Or is that too crazy for you right now? He's like, no, I could do that. And I'm like, well, could you also do, you know, lounging activities? Yeah, I could do that. I would tell him wood activities and earth activities because that supports the mother element before and the child element after, fire being in the middle, which is him tons of fire. So you guys, that is my read on Willem Dafoe. If you guys would like a reading from me, if you would like this process done to you, please contact me. I do this for a living. You can get a single solitary face reading by itself and we can just part ways there. Or if you so choose, you can work with me in a lifestyle guidance context where I read your face considerably more in depth than what I'm doing here. So this is about a 30 minute read for these celebrities just to go through and read them. But 
when I do for a person or a client, it's a 75 minute session diving into every layer that I can get into basically in 75 minutes. And then from there, the lifestyle guidance, seasonal eating, the type of movement, the type of meditation, what you have to have in your environments to nourish that which you are all come into play. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. And if there's someone else you would like me to read, a well-known person that you think is worthy of reading that has strong dominant features to your eye, please leave that in the comment section. Be sure to like and subscribe. And thank you so much for your time as always. Take care, you guys.